Thank you. Hello, everybody. So how many of you guys, just to understand the audience, how many of you guys have heard of eSports? Put your hands up. All right. It's good, because I, you know, one of the first things I want to, like, talk about is just what is eSports? Why do we call it eSports? Like, actually, I don't give a fuck what you call it. It's about the future of entertainment. And so, like, we don't call sports physical sports, P-sports. So eSports is just another way of saying, like, you know, this is the entertainment, we're adding a video game to it, and it's competitive. It's the nature of competition. We're going to go fully into what, how you define esports. Um, but firstly, like, I really want to kill this term, e-gaming, because what, what is e-gaming? And it's, it, yeah, so just, just let's, let's never use the word e-gaming. It doesn't make any sense. So firstly, esports isn't just like, okay, there's sport. This is a cultural shift in the world. This is the internet, the pervasiveness of the internet, combined with the computer devices in every hand, a playing field that's always there. It's a full-blown shift in, in our cultural uh, and, and entertainment like uh, values, effectively. So a little bit about me. I'm the founder of Fnatic. Fnatic is, put your hands up here if you've heard of Fnatic. Cool, it's like a few of you, good. Um, we're one of the most storied, if not the most storied, Western esports teams, and, and actually more of a lifestyle brand now. So we've been going since 2004. I started when I was 19. We've been in 21 different games. We ha currently have about 45 players, 75 staff. Um, we've been five times champion of like the championship series of League of Legends, uh, and also like world number one. Basically, we're really good at this. Um, yeah, there's a couple of shots from the back in the day where, where I was actually up on the stage as well. But what is eSports? I want to show you a quick video because it's nev never really quite the feel until you've actually... Well, firstly, what it's not. It's not this. It's gaming and eSports are two kind of different things. There's a big Venn diagram where they cross over. But really, eSports is an entertainment vehicle. It's both the, for the players but also as a viewing sport. So let's, let's see what that, that looks like now. By the mall, yeah, I'm burning it up. DPGC, you should be turning Turn it up. up. CPT, LBC, yeah, we hooking back up. And when they bang us in the club, baby, you got to get up. I'm here with Justice in the Fnatic booth. I'm here with all player partners. CSGO team, if not the best CS team in franchise history. I mean, what it feels like to a Fnatic, words can't describe. It, it took a while to sink in. It's amazing. I really like the players and like the way it makes me feel. You know, I like to like something because you care. All right. Since I've only got 15 minutes, I'm going to cut that short a little bit. Uh, but we do a lot of things as a brand. We have really different gamers. Um, I'm not going to talk about Fnatic now, though. I'm here to, to uh, talk about esports. And, and really, I want to talk about how we think about it and where we think it's going. So firstly, these are kind of the criteria how I define esports. But it's, it's any effectively sport which is digitally augmented or it, it, full using technology. So I, you can't say like a line thing on football is, is using technology. This is more like it's deeply a part of the game. So drone racing, I would say, is, a, is, is almost verging on an eSport. You know, but any sort of future competitive game which is actually digitally augmented can be an eSport. So Hunger Games mixed with physic physicality could be a real thing. It's skill, not luck. So there, you know, games like poker or whatever, we don't really classify those as esports titles. World of Warcraft isn't an esports title because it's uh, you have to play it, you have to grind to actually be any good at it. Whereas uh, you know, the other games, they're all a level playing field. You enter it, and you're as good as anybody else can be. You just have to play to get better, basically, like any sport. You've got a ball, you've got a computer, and the game, it's a level playing field. And the playing field is always online. And that's kind of the number one characteristic of eSports, is that if you've got an internet connection, if you're connected, you can compete. 
And that makes it kind of a much more pervasive and also much more easily engaging compared to real sport where you have to find that playing field and those, those the, you know, tr real sport, it's traditional sport. But we'll get into that. Um, it's rapidly evolving and I think this is what is, to me, one of the most exciting parts of it is that every month they're patching the games to be more fun to play, more fun to watch. So name another sport in the world where it's just literally updating on a monthly basis to be better and more entertaining, to capture more eyeballs and really get people invigorated by this. You have complete access to every single level of data. So if you're a machine AI guy, you're loving this because you can track every single aspect of what makes an amazing player, what makes your know, amazing plays. You can go back in time. You can see everything about that game. And you have so much data to work with, which, you know, because it's all using a, some sort of computer to, 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 use, to play it. It's also, they're very strategic games, so kind of like chess, but in a, in a three-dimensional space. So they're very he heavily strategic. I mean, obviously there's strategy involved in football, but it's, it's also quite a simple game in a sense that you get the ball in net and you're winning. Um, so how big is it really? Well, I'm gonna go through some quick numbers here, but basically it's, it's growing on a, on a rate of about 20% per year. There's 590, million people out there who are actually considered esports enthusiasts, so that's either people that watch or play, uh, and that's growing, or sorry, that's going to be the audience in 2020, but it's growing on a yearly basis. It's an insane audience. 65% of those audiences are young, right? So we're going to come back to that. They're all the, in the 18 to 34. It's like a, about an 80% male-dominated thing right now, but there are a lot more games coming into it, uh, a lot more females coming into, into esports. And the, one of the key stats is 44% of the people that view esports no longer play the esports titles. It's because they actually choose it as their entertainment vehicle instead of like Netflix or whatever, or even traditional sports. And at the moment, they're quite wealthy, but as you know, the, as the things like mobile games come in, they get, they, it's becoming a sort of everybody and every every kid, young kid is doing this. So you're seeing like you know more people who watch people that watch Twitch, for example, are watching twice as many minutes as they are the, on the YouTube, for example. There's 1.7 million people per month who are streaming their video games. Everyone's heard of Twitch in here, or, or do we not know what Twitch is? Put your hands up if you've heard of Twitch. Cool. So basically, Twitch is a, is a it's YouTube for video game streaming, basically. Um, so of all these things, what we're trying to uh, outline is what is the difference between esports and sport? Well, the moment, the on, only real difference is physicality, because ultimately you have the same level of competitiveness, you have a lot of hand-eye coordination, a lot of strategy, you have all the things that is defined by sport, but at the moment, you lack a level of physicality. Um, so, I mean, I'm kind of rushing through this, but uh, one of the things I want to, because I know there's a lot of people out there like, oh, I don't want to see a world where everyone's playing video games as, 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 instead of sports, you know, it's scary. Like, you just picture all these fat kids, but in reality, what we do by doing esports is we're humanizing these people which are already playing video games and making them stars. We're taking them out of the computer and putting them on a stage in front of their fans, in front of thousands of people that are choosing this as their pastime. It's like, it's no a hand-me-down from their dad, a hand-me-down from their mom. This is something that they've gotten into as a passion, as a movement. Uh, and they've, ch and especially, you know, if you look at Asian cultures, they haven't had a, a history of huge amount of sports where you went to with your dad and little league and whatever it w was, you know, because they, their um, economic growth has happened so fast that now esports is actually probably the first time they've had that kind of leisure activity of, 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 of you know, really pervasive across the entire regions. So, um, this is one of the other points I wanted to mention is that. You set your lifetime entertainment preferences in your before your 20s, basically. So all, as, a, as a growing young demographic, if you look at, say, MLB, the average age of an MLB fan is 53. The average age of an NFL fan is 47. The average age of an eSports fan is something like 17 or, or, or t between 17 and 21. So basically what we're saying is that like, when those people get older and that things that happen to old people happen, then the young people will come through and this will be the thing that's dominant because that we're, we have the younger audience right now and it's not going anywhere. So finally, physicality. Well, what is VR? What is AR? 
going to do to this? Well, why, why is esports limited by uh, physicality? In the future, Hunger Games is going to be a real thing, except it's going to be computer generated, and I'll be in this space fighting like this. But it will, be, it will actually become physical, and, it, the, and the levels of entertainment value that you can create around that when it's the limit of your imagination is so much higher. Like, why, why can't we go and watch a game on the moon of Titan while they're playing a video game, or competing? So really, we start to wonder about a couple of last thoughts before we can jump into like a couple of minutes of questions. What is happening right now in the world? Job automation. That's going to be an increasing problem of the future of, of humanity. We're going to lose the, the, the increasingly more menial tasks. What does that equal? That equals a lack of purpose. If you don't have to work to live, then what are you going to do? You know, where, where do you define purpose? Is it going to come from education, or is it going to come from a video game? And if you've got a video game, and you're in a, an environment like this, it's a scary. It's you know, to some people, this is very scary. But if you also understand that, you know, in, in the past, we never had an understanding that exercise was good, good for us until the 50s. Then we started to do sport and for, for the actual physical health aspect. Now we know so much about physical health and how it's good for us. Why can't we just make that into a game? Why can't we make part of the game becoming physically active and healthy? And so suddenly it's like, well, the only thing we're doing here is just augmenting our entire existence with, with technology, which in some regards is, is potentially inevitable. Thanks very much. So I've got like two minutes of questions. Anybody have any thoughts or questions or don't understand anything about esports? Go for it. You can have a cube there, then you have also a playful element or so. It's just everybody hears the question. <laughs> oh. um, I was just. It does work. It does. It yeah, does it work. should. Work. <laughs> Technology, yeah. Wow. Um, can you elaborate a bit on the differences differences between the Europe and U.S. So, U.S. grows faster, or you, you Europe is. You mean like the difference between esports of the U.S. and the. I yes. Mean, so the user accounts, uh, momentum. Uh, what, I mean, esports is. S Pretty much global, so that's one of the things that you know. League of Legends is very pervasive, as you're pretty much the number one esports game right now, uh, across America, across Europe, across China. It's 100 million monthly active players of, of League of Legends. Um, so, I mean, I think that's one of the big changes where we, you have the NFL, NBA, I, ice hockey in the U.S. Actually, we're going to have global sports. Like football will be you know, the other global sport out there, along with some of these esports titles. So you wouldn't say that the uh, U.S. is uh, more ahead uh, on this acceptation than, for example, Europe? Definitely not. I mean, maybe the U.K. is like a little bit lacking because they're like playing a lot of FIFA, but in reality, it's <laughs> it's it's like it's uh, it's it's Europe is very far. Actually, even Russia is extremely advanced at this. Anyone else? Uh, go for it. Well, you go first. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's a very short question. Uh, how do you see the role of traditional brands and, and, and corporates that are involved in the usual sport, yeah. physical sport? Same, same, th same thing. We're, you know, we're bringing a lot of endemics into the space right now. Gillette, uh, you know, ultimately, you want the youth, right? And how do you reach the youth? It, it, you, you have to go to where they are, and they've got ad blockers on. You know, what is the way to stop the ad blockers? Well, live sports, because it's, you can put it inside of the stream. So these brands are, are realizing increasingly so that they need to target esports as, as, as another r way to get the youth culture. Um, I have a question about uh, the future and the fragmentation of our, about esports because, mm -hmm. um, well, there is only one football and everyone agrees on it. But, but there's example, also tennis and basketball yeah, and darts and. I know, but um, um, uh, for example, shooters are a lo lot of shooters. Uh, yeah. And. Um, does that hurt esports? Um, is it not better to have like standardization of sports and have like small subset of rules that can um, improve uh, smaller players in the industry? I think the great thing about esports is it's been like an open source community. And every time a new player comes along, they've got to fight to win the eyeballs. And so they've got to make a better, more entertaining game to watch and play. So ultimately, I, I think that the fragmentation is, is just you know, why Android beats iPhone in the long run, in a sense that 
you know, it's, it's going to have much more user base because people have the ability to uh, change it, create a new one, pick their audience, get an audience together. I think what you will have is like people will get fatigued and they'll be end up being like four top ones at any one time. I don't think, you know, like sports, there's so many variants of ultimate frisbee and frisbee or whatever. Ultimately, that's fatigued and you, you get channeled into the one which has got the money and has got the actual like following. One more question and uh, then, no? One, let's see. Okay, that's a, that's a no. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you very much, Sam. <laughs>